Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about yet another unusual discovery coming from the center of our own galaxy. But it's not a black hole, or any other exotic object. It's actually something that is quite common, and something that seems to exist everywhere in the universe because of the phenomenon of the accretion disks. Because as you might already know, a lot of things in the universe seem to possess accretion disks that then seem to create the object itself. This obviously applies to black holes and neutron stars, but it also applies to different stars, and it might even apply to newly born planets. And based on various observations from various telescopes, such as the ALMA telescope, today it's generally believed that the accretion disks are responsible for the formation of pretty much every single low or medium mass stars and various planetary systems, including of course our own sun, and pretty much most of the nearby stars as well. But there's one question that a lot of scientists currently cannot answer. Does this also apply to some of the larger and more massive stars? So here we're talking about stars that are at least 30 or maybe 50 masses of the Sun, or possibly even in the hundreds. For example, this iconic star known as R136A1, the most massive star ever discovered, is potentially over 300 masses of the Sun in mass. So was this star also created in a similar way? Was there also an accretion disk here as well? Or did this star form by maybe collapsing into this mass directly? Or maybe in some other way? And so that's essentially the question that the scientists have been trying to answer for a pretty long time by looking at various examples out there. And so very recently, a team of scientists whose paper you can find in the description below was essentially exploring the center of our own galaxy and specifically looking at the region known as the Sagittarius region. The region where we have the supermassive black hole known as Sagittarius A star with the black hole itself being visible somewhere right there. But the Sagittarius region doesn't just contain Sagittarius A in it, it has other letters as well. Actually, overall, all of this kind of looks like this. So there's a lot of activity here, there are quite a lot of different emissions in various frequencies, but Sagittarius A star seems to be the most active of them all. And this is where we know there is a black hole. But as you can see, there is also Sagittarius C region, generally located a little bit to the right if you were to follow the galactic plane. Now naturally this is also an extremely active region with a lot of different activity, a lot of different stars, huge amounts of gas, with the overall density of space being approximately a million times higher than the space very close to the solar system. Or in other words, there's about a million times more gas and a lot of other stuff compared to what we would find in the vicinity of our own sun. And when looking in this region, the scientists have completely by accident identified something that looks like, well, basically, a kind of a miniature galaxy, which made it look like a very strange object to be located in such an unusual place. It's as if there was some kind of a smaller galaxy present inside the larger galaxy, the Milky Way, with the total size of this object being approximately 4,000 astronomical units across, so not actually that big at all, which is about 6% of one single light year making this a relatively small object, but obviously much, much bigger than the solar system. But what exactly was this object? Well, in theory, I guess it could be some kind of a galactic remnant, or possibly some kind of a galactic object being swallowed by the Milky Way, which we know happened quite a lot in the past. But in this case, it was just way, way too small compared to anything else we know exists out there. Most galaxies are at least a few hundred light years across. This one was like a million times smaller. And the main reason the scientists in this case got confused by this object is of course because of these unusual arms that it seems to possess. It kind of made it resemble a typical spiral galaxy. As a matter of fact, we kind of think that maybe this is what the Milky Way galaxy looks like if you were to look at it from the top. But when measuring this disk further and then trying to determine its mass, they discovered it possesses approximately 32 masses of the Sun in total, which suggested that this was basically some kind of a proto-star, a baby star. And it was also gravitationally stable, but seemed to possess these unusual arms. But it didn't take them long to figure out what most likely happened here. They now are pretty certain that this used to be a much larger disk, and definitely resembled something we see in other star systems. But something must have passed very close to this disk, which makes sense because, as I mentioned before, this is a very dense area with a lot of different stars in the vicinity. And when passing close to the disk, this object disturbed the formation of the protoplanetary disk, and ended up forming these unusual spiral arms, with the scientists in this case even identifying the secondary object. Or, in other words, none of this was strange, unusual, or mysterious in any way. This was basically a result of a near passage between two stars, or possibly a star and a baby star, 
which as a matter of fact we believe could have happened to the solar system as well. There's at least one video that should be somewhere right there or in the description that explores this concept in more detail because of the analysis of various ancient meteorites discovered across the solar system. And so, by disturbing the accretion disk, it formed the unusual spiral arms, but also captured some of its mass, which could, in theory, result in the formation of more baby planets around this probably older star. Or it could result in something entirely different, which means that the scientists should be probably looking at this as well. But I guess more importantly, what's coming out of the study is the fact that it definitively proves that larger, more massive stars seem to be also formed in the same way. In other words, they also seem to form using the accretion disk model. Mostly because the total mass here is over 32 masses of the Sun. And so by the time the star has formed, it will most likely form something really giant and something really bright. But also something that's most likely going to go supernova pretty quick, within just a few million years. But the other impressive thing here is the fact that all of this is located about 26,000 light years away from us, and also in a region that's generally really difficult to see. There's just so much dust here that generally hides a huge proportion of the galaxy from our view. But in this case, they were able to see, identify, and even measure the mass and the size of both of these objects, with the smaller star being approximately three masses of the Sun in mass. Although all of this was discovered not by looking at these objects, but by running simulations and trying to recreate the scenario where the scientists could also create these unusual arms in the model version of their protoplanetary disk. And it seems to have worked, and they seem to have determined that this is pretty much the only way where you can produce these unusual arms without breaking any major laws of physics. With all this very likely happening approximately 12,000 years ago. With the other important discovery in this case being the fact that this is the first protoplanetary disk discovered in the center of our own galaxy, which of course means that this region definitely possesses new stars, and the stars that are created and destroyed in a very similar way to stars we find in other parts of the galaxy and we find everywhere around us. Despite the fact that this is such a dense region with so much activity and so much potential for a destruction of any new object. But because of this first discovery, it also might suggest that there could be more similar objects discovered in some of the future studies, with many of them very likely still being hidden by all of this dust. And so it's only a matter of time before the scientists discover something else really exciting and really unusual. Until then though, well that's pretty much it. A very interesting study and a very interesting observation, and a solution to a known problem of how massive stars form as well. But once something else is discovered, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Check out the links and the paper in the description below, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful personal t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.